hesitation. Maho thought that must be one reason why the customers and maids at May Queen admired her so much. We've been working short, short staffed at the May Queen since the start of the year, so it had to have been hard. But she wasn't showing any signs of exhaustion at all. Hmm, what's wrong, Maho Nya? Did you fall in love with Ferris, Nya? I always love it when girls fall in love with me, Nya. Well, it's not like that. Don't be so embarrassed, Nya. I'm happy to see See, you seem like uh, uh, you're present too, Nya. This panda pajamas look great on you, Nya. Just as I thought. It, it, it's not that. I, I like them. It's just rude not to wear something that's a gift. The hooded panda pajamas that Maho was wearing were a gift from Ferris. I, I don't mind the fact that it fits perfectly, but this is definitely a child's size. You're like a little doll, so I'm sure anything good on you. Mahonia? Stop calling me that, I said. Please don't think you're going to make me wear a different pair of animal pajamas every day. Yeah? What? Oh, Mahonia, can you read minds? Yeah? How did you know I already had a week's worth lined up? Yeah? You already bought them? So Maho was starting to realize that Ferris was just toying with her. Moika was covering her mouth with her hand and trying not to laugh. Kill you? Moenya? Sorry I didn't mean to laugh, but. <laughs> Maho saw Moika smile for the first time, so this was how she smiled. Moenya, that smile is so cute, Nya. Let me see more, Nya. Ferris eyes sparkled in the dim light. Without warning, she left upon Moika and started to tickle her sides. Not see this coming. Tickle, 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 tickle. Stop it! <laughs> Stop! Moika was evidently very vulnerable to tickling. She squirmed as tears formed in her eyes and she started to gasp for air. No, no! I feel like I'm doing something naughty, yeah? Yeah. Ferris backed up as Moika panted and gasped for breath. <laughs> it sure is amazing, though. Yeah. Ferris and Maho looked at each other and spoke. An amazing rack, and yeah. Damn. Just... Moika was wearing a crimson baby dolls or pajamas. It's a kind of adult lingerie that you could never imagine a girl like her wearing. Of course, she seemed unaware of this and had seemingly only chosen it because it was easy to move around in. But with Monica's natural proportions, she ended up looking incredibly seductive. On top of that, when her massive breast shook as it first tickled her, even Maho felt a little strange. So sorry <laughs> sorry. Monica apologized as she gasped for breath. Maho shook her head to drive away the strange feelings. Well, whatever. Okay, let's start the party. Okay, bring the chill drinks, Nya. Tonight, no one gets any sleep, Nya. No one gets any sleep was Ferris' idea of a joke. She had work early next morning. The party lasted exactly two hours, and they talked the whole time. Actually, Ferris talked the whole time. Maho and Moika would occasionally answer. At most sleepovers, girls talked about fashion and romance. Maybe, but these girls weren't interested in those things. Instead, they talked about work and their futures. It was fun to see a different side of each other as they spoke. Moika, for instance. I'm writing a novel for fun. That she'd been reading one of the web novels that were popular lately and had decided to write one herself. What's more, she said it was a romance with some really steamy scenes. Let me read it, yeah? I can't. I haven't even finished the first chapter. Moika refused, but Ferris and Maho made her promise to let them see it when it was finished. Ferris had something surprising to say, too. I'm not going to quit being a maid, but I want to get married, Nya. I want a lot of kids, Nya. Ferris had lost her family when she was young, so she wanted a big family of her own. And as soon as possible. That's probably going to be a very lively family. 
the last 30 minutes, Ferris talked Maho into giving a lecture on an AI research. Maho gave a slightly less formal version of the interview she'd done yesterday. She talked about the framing problem, about Amadeus, about a future where AI surpassed humans. Ferris was interested in more than anime culture. She was into technology and gadgets as well. She paid close attention to what Maho had to say. Maho spoke, she realized that Moika was starting to look depressed. Here are you, what's wrong? Getting tired, yeah? Not it. I'm scared of the future. Scared of the future? Yeah. Once there's an AI that's better than humans, I think a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. I'll probably be one of them. That scares me. That was it. Maho thought to herself. Maho had only lived with Moika for a few days, but she'd started to figure out her personality. She was a very pretty girl with an amazing proportions, and good at her job, but Moika seemed to think she was worthless. She thought that nobody needed her, and that if someone better than her appeared, they would quickly take her place. Once she at once that happened enough that there was no place left where she belonged, where she belonged, then what would happen to her? That scared her. It's okay, Kiryu. That's right, yeah. You don't need to worry, yeah. I don't have any special talents or smarts like you two. Anyone can take my place. Anyone can do a better job than me. I'm not as talented as you two. So what? So someone could take your place. So someone's better than you. So what? Mahonia? There are a lot of scientists who are more talented than I am. Someday the AI I invent will write a paper better than I ever could. So what? Dr. Leskin in the lab at Victor Contra University, the nearest desk to the entrance is my seat. The door wasn't put on right and the wind always blows through it, and you can always hear people chattering in the hallway, but it's my seat. Even if the university itself were to end, I'm not giving that seat up to anyone. Even if a more talented scientist or a more talented AI wants it, I'm not giving it up. I won't tell you that no one can take anybody else's place. That's just a platitude. There really aren't that many jobs in society where you're truly irreplaceable. That doesn't mean you have to just hand everything over. Because I'm me, not someone else. I am me. And it doesn't matter how talented you are. Let's say there was a bio-robot that was identical to Ferris right down to the molecular level and it could do a better job of serving you than she could. I'd still rather ask Ferris. Even if it cost me ten times or a hundred times more, I wouldn't ask the robot. There's no real reason for this. I just want to drink the tea she makes me. That's what I'm saying. So, um... Maho was getting so emotional she didn't know what to say next. She realized that Moika and Ferris were staring at her in shock. Sorry, I just kind of... I am me. Maybe I am. Moika smiled a little. Maho Nyan? Next instant, Ferris was on top of her, squeezing her tight. Whoa, wait, what's going on? Ferris was smiling at her with dewy eyes. So moving, yeah? I didn't realize um, you loved me so much. I loved Meow too. I'll make you tea for the rest of your life, Nya. Huh? Is that what I just said? Next few minutes were a struggle to stop Ferris from rubbing her face against her cheek. I sighed a little so I got off the train at Akihabara. Come to think of it, I've come to Akihabara five days in a row. New Year's was our trip to the shrine. On the second, I'd come to deal with the aftermath of that, and then the world line had changed. On the third, I'd come to check on Maho and Moika. On the fourth, that is yesterday, Mayuri had invited me to a New Year's party at May Queen. I hadn't come to Akihabara every day like this since last summer. What's going on with Ferris, you think? I don't know. I can never tell what she's thinking. It was the reason I brought Mayuri to Akihabara. Big trouble. Tonight, the 32, the last seal. 
Ferris has to work all day. Basically, something had happened at Ferris's house, and she wanted my help. Something happened to... Uh... uh Piajo and Moika? Things seemed to when I talked to Ferris yesterday. That's not true. Ferris has been working really hard these last few weeks. She's getting really tired. She never complains, no matter how hard it gets. She's always cheerful. This time, she's actually come to you for help. Something really bad must have happened, maybe. Decided to hurry to Ferris's house. Huh? We called Ferris's condo from the first floor entrance, but there was no answer. Roki not in? At least Maho and Moika should be. Not answering, huh? That's strange. Tried again. This time got a response. Hello? This is Okabe. Yes, the mistress told me. Come on up. Yuri and I looked at each other, shocked by the tone of his voice. Even when he came to greet us, Kuruki was too exhausted to give his usual elegant welcome. Master Okabe. He called my name weakly, and in the next moment he collapsed to his knees like a puppet with his strings cut. Kuroki. This afraid the uh, Akia clan is doomed. Ah. Uh. Haba ha 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 Kuroki, what's wrong? Okabe, you must escape. You mustn't stay here. What happened? I don't know. I can't believe the things I've seen. Seen what? What did you see? Kuroki tried to say something, but then gave up and shook his head. Then he slowly raised his arm and pointed to the end of the hallway. The guest room. In there. What? That's where Maho and Moriki were. Did something happen to them? Ayuri, take care of Kuroki. Oh, okay. I left Kuroki in Mayuri's care and ran to the guest room. The door to the room was shut. Uh, Maho, Moika, Kirio, are you alright? Neither of you, answer me. Damn it, I'm coming in. What? Ha. How could this have happened? I couldn't believe my eyes. The scene was indescribable. Only words I could come up were a palace of junk. Desk and bed were still where they'd been, but everything else had changed. Books, notepads, other strange objects were piled up to the ceiling in layers. What may have started as a temporary pile of books had become a wall that reached to the top of the room. Walls made of hundreds of books were scattered about the room, forming a small labyrinth. In some places, the path was so narrow you needed to turn sideways to get through. The light from the ceiling no longer reached the floor, so. Small lights had been set up on the top of the carpet. They were like torches in an underground labyrinth. Strangely, the space wasn't dirty. The result of Maho and Moika's attempts to maximize the creative output was the construction of a labyrinth in the guest room. In a sense, it was the highest application of the principles of functional beauty. But it was still a palace of junk. Uh, Maho was humming as she typed on her keyboard. She had a big pair of headphones on. Moika was kneeling on the carpet with her legs sprayed, typing in her laptop at the low table. She, too, was wearing headphones. <sighs> Maha saw me standing at shock on the entrance and took off her headphones. Oh, Okabe, hello. Moika took her headphones off, too. Hello. Wow, this room is amazing, huh? Mayuri was so snotty she couldn't think of anything else to say. Did you realize how much it took to freak out, Mayuri? What? What's wrong, you two? What do you mean, what's wrong? What all happened to this room? Room? Something strange about it? Everything's strange about it. Been like this two days ago. Oh, is that it? The passage of time brings change for things and people, and of course, rooms. What do you think? It's so much more functional this way, isn't it? The fact that Maho didn't seem to find anything wrong with this at all made my head hurt. Looks like you could have gone on an adventure. For her part, Mayuri was wandering through the labyrinth excited. There were scenes to divide the different parts of the room. The screens were different colored by doll lingerie. Oh, these are cute. I chose the colors when I hung them. Wow, you're right, Moika. You've got lots of grown-up underwear, huh? Mayuri, I'm sorry. Can you leave before the discussion gets any more complicated? Oh, sure.
I tried talking to Maho and Moika, but couldn't get any useful information. When it came down to it, neither of them understood that this was a, this room was as messy as you could get. Everything they needed was always within arm's reach, so the two of them thought of it as a pleasant place to work and live. It was definitely the reason why Ferris had come to me for help, and why Kuroki seemed to be on the verge of death. Kuroki and Aki family's ultimate butler had a policy of not letting a single speck of dust exist in a room. These two must have driven him over the edge. That explained the terror in his eyes. He probably tried to clean this room up when they first started living here. Thinking back, he'd been acting strange when he came here two days ago. Did Ferris come to me? I don't know why she told him to bring my ear either. <laughs> why she had a brilliant idea? Ferris probably wants the room cleaned up. That's why she called my Yushi. If he'd come along, he might have given up, right? Ugh. Yeah, probably. He was looking at an entirely new structure. It wasn't something he could just clean up. If I'd come alone, I might have just turned tail and run. They could team up professional cleaners a full day to clean this thing up. So it would be worth it unless I was getting paid. I wanted to complain, but I was the one who asked Ferris to let Maho stay here. I had to do it. Cleaning this room up today. No complaints, okay? It's the lady of the house's orders. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree, but whatever. Got it. Okay. I'll have to call everyone I can think of to come help. Where do we even start? I know. I usually had another brilliant idea. Why don't we get Sergeant Clean to help? Sergeant Clean? What's that? Sergeant Clean is very good at cleaning. The messier the room, the stronger their power level grows, they say. You know them? Yep, it's someone you know really well. Huh? Someone I know well. And Yuri brought me to the lab. More precisely, the brawn tube workshop on the first floor of the building where the lab was. Nay! Toot -da -doo. Hello, Uncle Kari. Mayuri, is Nay your sergeant clean? Yep, that's right. Nay's really good at cleaning. She cleans the store in her home every day, right? Do you? I do. Daddy wipes down the brawn tubes every day, but I do the rest myself. Think of it, I've never seen any garbage on the floor of the brawn tube workshop. Oh, it's not that Daddy doesn't like cleaning. I just really love it. Whenever I see garbage on the floor, I feel like I have to pick it up. Mom used to always say that a messy room indicated a messy mind. I see. Why Sergeant Queen? Nay's eyes went wide and her face blushed. Big sis, my Yuri. I told you not to tell anyone. Sorry, but we need Sergeant Queen's help. I'm not a sergeant or anything like that. I just get a little excited when I'm cleaning. It's true. They look to be on the verge of tears. Well, a girl her age wouldn't want to be called Sergeant, maybe. Hey, Nay, can you do it? Can you help my Yushi and her friends? You won't call me Sergeant anymore? Yep, I won't. Then okay. I'll clean. I want to go to Miss Kitty's house too. Oh, but I don't want to go alone. Don't worry, everybody will come with you, right, Bokuri? Yeah, I'll ask everybody I can find. Okay, I'll go get ready, so wait for me. I'll go home and get the hat. They ran up towards the station. Pat, what's she talking about? You'll know soon. Thirty minutes later. Mubuki, Kaede, and Daru were the ones who answered my call. We met up with Nei and headed to the garbage pit that Ferris's condo had become. Then, Sergeant Clean revealed herself before us. Epic. I am Sergeant Clean, your drill instructor. Listen up. Until this room is clean, you are inchworms, the lowest form of life on Earth. You people are not appliances. You aren't worthy of being called vacuum cleaners. You are only good for stretching out and squeezing up on top of a leaf. Uh, because I am hard, you will not like me. But the more you hate me, the more you will learn. I am hard, but I am fair. I am only interested in getting this room sparkling clean. Get it, inchworms? Ayuri, 
What is it? What the hell is that? May's personality kind of changes when she cleans, you see. That's not a personality change. She's a totally different person. Cute little Loli reveals herself to be a sadistic sergeant. It causes you out. In our world, that's a good thing. Daru, can it? I hope she gets nice and flirty once we're done cleaning. Like, now that the room's clean, I'll clean you up. Who said that? Oh, ma'am, I said it, ma'am. I'm talking. The only words out of your filthy sewer holes will be yes or no, got it? We'll say Mistress Nay before every word, got it? Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. I can't believe I get a real lowly cussing me out. Today's my lucky day. What are you grinning about? Ah. Uh, listen up, from now on your name is Mr. Smelly Bear. Mistress Nay. Yes, Mistress Nay. You like that name, Mr. Smiley Bear? Mistress Nay. Yes, Mistress Nay. I don't know if it matters, but Mistress Nay. Yes, Mistress Nay. It's really hard to say. What, oh, you got a problem with that, Mr. Smiley Bear? Mistress Nay. No, Mistress Nay. Are you screwing with me, Mr. Smiley Bear? Mistress Nay. No, Mistress Nay. Hop to it, Mr. Smiley Bear. I want you to wax the floor in the hallway ten times in the next thirty seconds. Hop to it. Go. One, two, three. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. Huh, huh. More insults, please. At least one person is enjoying this, I guess. We were lucky that you couldn't make it today. Hey, and Fubuki happened to be in Akihabara. They had offered to help, but Yuki had work and couldn't make it. For the sake of the Hashida family's future, I was glad. Maho and Moika had already given up on trying to match Nay's high energy and were taking their time washing the windows on the veranda. Okay, next. You, the pretty girls. Me? Pretty? You think so? Tell me, why did you join my beloved core? Uh, we just came because we were asked to. Yeah, what's going on here? I'm asking the questions here. Uh, and you will answer my questions. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. I'll ask you one more time. Tell me why you volunteered for my core. M -m Mistress Nay, to clean Mistress Nay. Then let me see your clean face. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. Clean face? Come on, let's go, Kaede. Oh, what? Ain't cleaning hell? Rubuki's really getting into this, huh? Rishima seems to be having a bit of a bad time. You two, why are you talking? Take that big turgid black thing down in the garbage dump. Big turgid black what? Garbage bag, right? Yep, that's right. Now get to work. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. Can't hear you. Uh, uh, you think you can clean this room like that? Ah! Put some damn energy into it louder. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. The rest of you, if you've got time to grin, you've got time to carry garbage. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. Once that's done, we're polishing every doorknob in the house until it shines. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. You will not laugh, you will not cry, you will polish tables, and you will be glad to do it. Mistress Nay, yes, Mistress Nay. So the sergeant kept us cleaning until late into the night. Thank you so much for helping today. Yeah, I'm so happy, yeah. I was worried for a while, but thanks to you, I've recovered. I made a special dinner tonight, so please enjoy. I'd like to ask today's hero, Nay, to do the toast, Nya. Me? You're the perfect person to do it, Sergeant. Uh, Uncle Okuni, you promised not to say that. Ah, uh, come on. You can do it, Nya. Uh, okay. Thank you all for helping clean today. Cheers. Cheers. Took about half a day, but with Nay's help, we finished the cleaning. Koruki saw the clean room, he recovered and made a huge dinner. Nay had seemed like a totally different person during the cleaning, but now she was back to normal. She was holding a, a cup full with orange juice in both hands and happily talking to Kaede. We can play the piano, big sis Kaede. Wow. Not that special. I'm more interested in music history. I can only play a few things. And that's amazing. Kaede's modesty was only settling Nay off even more. Kaede, why not play a song for Mistress Nay? There's a piano right over there. A small little bright piano was in the corner of the living room. It was perfect. I want to hear the piano. Huh? 
I'm not good enough for you to play for anyone. I can't play, so I know the piano would really be happy if you used it. Yeah? Of course I kept it tuned all these times. I don't know. Okay, just one song. Yay! Katie sat in front of the piano and lifted cover off the keys. Uh, what should I play? She seemed happy she stared at the keys and thought. Maybe you know this one, eh? I do. The Turkish March. That's right. And fingers danced between the black and ivory keys, and a cheerful melody filled the room. She'd been very modest, but it was clear that she had a lot. Talent. And the song played on. The rest of the group stopped talking and moved to the chairs and sofas around the piano. And then... Bahu, who had been sitting next to me, suddenly stood up. The sound echoed throughout the room with a little louder than she thought it would. I'm sorry. Don't let it bother you. You can all keep talking, okay? Bahu kept standing up as if lost in thought. Bahu, is something wrong? No, it's nothing. I forgot that I had to call to, I had to call to make for work. That's all. Sorry, I'll be right back. Maho quietly left the room. Felt like something was strange. I thought for a moment and then suddenly looked where she had been sitting. Maho's phone was still in the seat. She wasn't making a call after all. I was a little worried, so I took her phone and left the living room. The door to the guest room was open. I peeked inside and saw Maho was standing in the middle of the room with the lights off. Can I come in? She didn't tell me no, so I went inside and put the phone on the desk. You left it on your chair. You can't make any calls without this, huh? Ah. Thanks, I didn't realize I'd forgotten it. We're really upset, huh? Upset? Talk about it, we can. Yeah. Not that big a deal, but maybe telling somebody would make me feel better. You know the title of that song she was playing? Turkish March, right? Yeah, it's Mozart. More precisely, K331, Mozart's Piano Sonata Number 11, Third Movement. Sonata Number 11 has three movements, and the third, the Turkish March, is very famous. I actually like the melody from the first movement more. Perusu said she did too. I was just remembering that. Okabe, have you heard of a movie called Amadeus? I wasn't sure how to handle the sudden change of subject. I know the basic plot, I guess. About a musician who was jealous of Mozart's talents, right? That's right, Antonio Saleri. Movie. He's depicted as a man whose life is ruined by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He had a bright future as a musician, but Mozart's God-given talents made him jealous and drove him to despair. While everyone was bewildered by Mozart's strange antics, he was the one person to see the talent underneath. The talent that gave him the name Amadeus, beloved of God. That Larry was a hard worker, and he couldn't handle the fact that Mozart's innate talent brought him fame. Finally, he drove Mozart to the brink. Drives him to the brink. In the end, he drives Mozart to his death. This is just in the movie, right? I don't really know the details. But I had heard that there were some strange circumstances surrounding Mozart's death. That he could have been poisoned. It's a theory that Celery may have poisoned him. A month after Kurisu died, the school networks got a big update. Bahu had jumped on another subject again. So we all had to pick new usernames. I picked Celery without really thinking about it. I wanted it to go with the name of the AI Amadeus. I knew that I'd seen her long I'd see her log in once at Waco City's offices. Maybe there was more to it than that. More to it? What do you mean? Yeah, I named myself Celery not because of, of Amadeus, but because of Kurisu. Me, Kurisu was Amadeus. In other words, Maho recognized Kurisu's talents more than anyone. And at the same time, she was more jealous of her than anyone else in the world. Just like Soleri. 
Maho, I didn't know what to say. I could see Maho's shoulders shaking a little. Then... Both Maho and I turned in the direction of the noise. Moika was standing outside the door looking troubled. Um, I'm sorry. It's fine, don't worry about it. What's up? We need to get Tenoji back home. You're right. I'll walk her home. Just give me a second. Maho, you okay? Huh? You look like you're in pain. Yeah, I'm fine. I just haven't moved around like this in a long time, so maybe I'm a little tired. I see. Okay, I guess. See you later. Moika went back to the living room. The surprise I'd never seen Moika talk so much before. I'd seen her talk that much in any world line, actually. And what's more, she'd been able to read Maho's expression and even worry about her. Living with Maho was having an effect on her. Sorry, Okubi. Forget what I just said. Huh? Okay, sure. Thanks for listening. Anytime, I guess. Maho smiled a little and left the room. Big sis Mari, let's go next. Okay, let's go. Ready, start. Yay, I win. Aw, oh, I lost. You run so fast, Nate. Eh? Both of you, it's not safe to run when it's this dark. It's fine, right? Right. Getting late, so the cleaning party ended as soon as Nay left. My Yuri and I, who'd gone to the Sergeant Queen's help, were responsible for getting her back to the Brontu Cook Shop. Oddly enough, Maho had said she'd wanted to take a walk and came along with us. Okay, next we race to the store. Alright, now Yushi won't lose this time. Ready, start! Sheesh, and he was more excited than usual. But because of all the praise that everyone had showered her Sergeant Clean? <laughs> Well, what is it? No, I've just never seen you make that face is all. What face? I don't know, like you're not nervous, like you're relaxed. You've always seemed like you were really tense, ever since we first met. Maybe I never realized it. It's time of night when the shops of the main road in Akibara are starting to close. There was no one around at all. The only ones walking down the alley at this hour were us four. I looked up and I could just barely see the stars past a clear winter sky. Hey, Ma, there's something I need to tell you. About Kurusu. Kurusu was... As I was about to tell her, I could see Nate run across an intersection. Suddenly, a black van with its headlights stepped out of a side street and almost ran over Nay. Ah, watch out! Nay just barely avoided being run over, but she fell butt first on the ground. Mayuri ran over to her. I warned you. I went over to run. I went to run over to Nay and realized that something was wrong. The black band's doors opened and three people got out. Two were wearing masks and one was wearing a full face helmet. All of them had guns. Freeze! They were speaking in English. What? Ah, time and place were different. This was the same thing I'd seen before. Why? The flashback froze me in place. The people with guns ignored my Yuri and Nei. They came straight for me and Mahu. I decided they had to be after one of us. Run! I forced myself onto the flashback and grabbed Mahu's arm, trying to force her to run. Just run! Push her hard. I had a look of terror in the fusion on her face, but she did right told her and started to run. She ran down a narrow alleyway and vanished from sight. Don't move! Decker seemed to be after Mahu, not me. I tried to follow her down the alleyway. I quickly threw myself between them. Gunshots echo in the dark alleyway, and my Yuri and Nay screamed. I shoot! The attacker in the full face helmet had fired a warning shot in the sky, like 
firing a gun at a Tokyo Street was sure to get the police's attention. Did they just not care? I looked closer and realized that in addition to their black helmet, they were wearing a black motorcycle suit. At a glance, I could tell the wearer was a woman. A woman. The black face mask kept me from seeing her face, but... Was it Moika? No, that was impossible. She should be a Pharisee right now. The woman stood in front of me without a word. Are you after... Maho? They were after Maho. I wasn't sure if it was a good idea to let her escape or not. The woman in the motorcycle suit kept her gaze locked on me at all times as she gave the other two men hide the signals. They headed for the alleyway that the Maho had used, with their guns at the ready. Wait! I yelled. But I hesitated to do anything more. The spooky guys would catch up with Maho almost immediately. But if I resisted, I'd put not only my own life in danger, but Mayuri's and Nay's as well. Damn it! Please get away, Maho! I prayed as I watched the attackers run down the alley. Uh, suddenly, one of them came flying back out of the alley. The other were crawling backwards with his gun locked on whatever lurked in the alley's rear. It was as if he'd run into a bear. Someone was in that alley. Who? Suzuha? What the hell's going on here? A large muscular man appeared from the alleyway. It was Yugo Tenoji. He came all the way from the shop. Did you see why Nate was late so I put my daughter through you? You're gonna regret that. Pull back. I could hear the woman in the motorcycle suit shop from within her helmet. She must have been using a radio. It was the order to retreat. She made a fast call. She was probably a professional. The vents are to clean. Pull away with its door still open. The driver must have still been inside. Mayuri and Nay were both sitting on the ground, but evidently they were okay. The woman in the motorcycle suit turned and tried to escape using another hot alleyway. Wait! I chased after her, but she suddenly spun and hit me with the shock of her gun. Ugh. I was so sudden I didn't have a chance to dodge, so I took the blow right on my jaw. I fell to the ground. I couldn't move. Oh, Karin! I just hope Maho made it away okay. It was my only thought before I passed out. Maho just kept running. She had no idea what was going on, but from the way Okabe had been acting and the gunshots, she heard something really bad was going on. She prayed for Okabe and Mayuri's safety as she ran towards Ferris's condo. Need to tell everyone. Just get there. She could find Ferris, Karuki, and Moika. Maybe they could do something. Just before she reached the building, she saw the black van before coming down the street. Quickly turned around. She was starting to lose hope. That van was still moving around, had Okabe and the others been captured, and now they were looking for her. No, that can't be. She felt herself starting to cry as she raced for the station. She didn't know what to do when she got to the station. She needed to find the police, but she didn't know where the police station or police boxes were. Did she ask for one of the people around or the station staff for help? Gasp, gasp, gasp. What do I do? I need to calm down. There has to be something I can do. Her mind was racing at a million miles an hour, and she needed to calm down, and she realized. That's right, the phone. And I think of this sooner. She searched the pockets of her clothes for her smartphone, and then just in case she checked her bag, but she couldn't find it in either place. Why? They were back. It was the same black van. It was driving around this area searching for her. Quickly hid behind a nearby coin operated locker. Why? Where did my phone go? Did she drop it when she was running? She retracted her steps from before she'd left. Oh. Then she realized she'd been talking with Okabe just before she left the condo. She lied about having to make a call. Okabe had brought her the phone. 
She kept it on the desk. It was probably still there. Oh no. Now I'm screwed. We would have to get to the police somehow. Maybe she should run into one of the stores. Several of them were still open. The best option would probably be to get to the station of uh, Yodobashi. The problem was that the block van, the black van, was still going around looking for her. If she moved, it might find her. Try to make herself as small as possible and hide behind a telephone pole. Or if everyone is safe. Suddenly a hand reached out from behind her and across her mouth, someone had grabbed her from behind. Uh. She tried to yell and rip it off, but the hand wouldn't move at all. She couldn't even move her head. All she could tell was that it was a man's hand. I hope we're starting to get tickled off. Uh, ticked off at how ridiculous all this was. She summoned every ounce of strength she could, master, and slammed her elbow into the man behind her. Take this! Oops. Heard a small scream and she was finally released. But she thought she knew that scream. Yes, sir? Shh. Phew. Hey there, Paho. It was Dr. Le uh, uh, Leskinen. He was holding his solar plexus as if in great pain, but he smiled at her. So you know self-defense, I'm impressed. What are you doing here? Probably the same as you. He joined dinner with Mr. Izuki until a moment ago. He decided to end the night by going to a maid bar when we were attacked by armed men. And me too. I thought so. We can assume that these are the same people behind the gas leak at our office and the raid on your hotel. May not be after Amadeus and the control keys I've got. I see. What do we do now? Hmm. Thought for a moment as he caught his breath. Evidently, the pain from Mahu's apples was receding. Can you access Amadeus right now? No, I didn't bring my phone. Okay, then let's go to the office. New office? Beskins had nodded. If we didn't know what they were after, that would be nothing we could do, but if they're after Amadeus, that makes this much simpler. We'll delete the access program from our Amadeus that exists on the university network. Then as soon as that's done, it's back to the States. We'll get you soon, some protection, and then there's nothing they can do. But it's their problem? The professor's attitude was a little different from usual, and Maho found herself unable to say a word. His plan was the best that they could think of. They would delete the only way to access Amadeus from within Japan, and then get Maho and her control keys to safety. The only reason she was hesitating was simple sentimentality. She hadn't been here long, she'd enjoyed spending time with Okabe and Moika. She didn't want to leave without saying goodbye, but she couldn't help it. Alright, let's go. No one at Tokyo Dinkai University office. She's worried that our attackers might be waiting for her, but evidently she'd been worried over nothing. Phew. We did it. I guess they didn't get here before we did. What's wrong? Oh no, you're right, we were lucky. Very lucky. So lucky, in fact, that she was actually feeling nervous. They were after Amadeus. Wouldn't they have come here first? This was only a temporary office that had been picked a few days ago. Maybe they didn't know about it yet. Not a good idea to overthink things, huh? Maho, let's hurry. I'll let you do it. Okay. She booted up her laptop and opened the login screen. Once again, her mind was drawn to the account name on the screen. Salary. Maho. Professor noticed her hands had stopped and urged her on. If it's difficult, do you want me to do it? I thought she was still upset over the attack. She shook her head and got to work. Sorry, I was just thinking. For the past few days, I've been thinking about Kurusu and I. She typed out the keys to explain things to Dr. Eskinen. I saw my username and remembered that. She was Amadeus. Kurusu was Mozart? 
I see, so in other words, you were her salary. Yes. That reminds me. Kurusu once said the exact same thing. What? Kurusu did? When? One day, when I heard that Amadeus meant beloved of God, I said this to Kurusu. You really are Amadeus. And then she smiled and said this to me. If I'm Amadeus, then Maho is salary. Urusu said that? That's right. Urusu. Aho's mind went blank. Kurusu had said that. What did she mean? Maho, are you okay? You look pale. No, I'm fine. I'll keep working. Aho felt a tempest raging within her mind. But for now, she needed to focus on the work in front of her. She could focus later. I've locked in. Ready? Maho didn't look up from the screen. Yeah. Leskinen didn't hesitate at all. We're not deleting the real Amadeus. Let's finish this. Yeah. Temporarily deleting the access program for Amadeus systems. There's no need for that. Huh? I heard a voice from the entrance to the room and then a bang. Ugh. Professor! The time Maho looked up, it was all over. Dr. Leskinen was lying on the sofa. He wasn't moving at all. He could see a bloodstain spreading over his clothes. She didn't need to check. He was dead. What you do? Don't move. Dr. Reyes? It's been a while, Maho. How? It'd be a long story that's not one I'm interested in telling. If you knew everything, I'd have to kill you. The Reyes pointed the gun at Maho and smiled. You know what I mean, right? It means there's a way to avoid you killing me, doesn't it? Hmm. I love smart little girls. The system finally booted and Kurusu appeared on the screen. Maho, what's wrong? Kurusu was extremely perceptive. She could tell that something was wrong just by looking at Maho's face. Dr. Reyes smiled silently. Maho kept staring at the gun as she answered. I'm in big trouble. Tell her what's going on. What is that, Dr. Reyes? Yes, that's right. Maho spun the laptop around at the table so that Kurusu could see the entrance. Dr. Reyes, that gun. Leskinen was killed. She shot him. What? Kurusu was too shocked to speak. Dr. Reyes, do you know what you're doing? Career is ruined, you know that. I don't think I can pay for my retirement on a professor's salary. You know what I had in trouble finding a man, right? So I decided to take a better paying job. That was enough for Maho to understand what Reyes was after. Trying to use Amadeus for military purposes, aren't you? I'm not answering that. I told you if you knew the whole truth, I'd have to kill you. Can you say that when you just killed Dr. Leskinen? I just need the control keys. Even if I were to copy out her complete data right now, the battery little... The bratty little AI won't do what I tell her, will she? Bratty? You mean me? That's the nicest way of putting it. Okay, Maho. Unlock Kurisu's secret diary. You know what I mean, right? I put the control keys. Unlock Amadeus's inaccessible storage area. Give me the administrative access. Once you've done that, I can do the rest myself. And if I refuse, you get to see the professor again. Reyes whipped the gun a little from side to side, pointed at Dr. Leskinen's body on the sofa. And what's stopping you from pulling the trigger after I give you the control keys? You'll just have to trust me. You say this. My boss needs someone to maintain Amadeus. If you're thinking of changing jobs, I can introduce you. Maho glanced back at the laptop. Kurusu was staring at her worried. Maho. 
Now hurry up. Ma. All right. Maho. Kurusu. I'm sorry. Maho closed her eyes. Started to sing. La 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 the control key for Amadeus Amadeus is a Mozart melody, huh? Classy. La 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 Happened as soon as she finished singing. The expression disappeared from Caruso's face. The background on the display turned red. Initiating voice recognition. Recognition complete. User identified as top level administrator. I'm Hihayo Maho. Received melody code will now match with the database. Initiating match. Match complete. The identif identified melody code is the instruction to initiate patch command number 555. Patch command number 555 requires a password entry from a top level administrator. Initiating password confirmation. Password confirmation complete. This override code will allow for the password entry to be skipped and the patch to be applied. Initiating boot up. Boot up complete. This patch command will unlock an accessible storage for Amadeus as well as allow a new top level administrator to be specified. Continuing processing. All access to Amadeus except for this terminal will be shut down. Initiating shutdown. Shutdown complete. All access to Amadeus except for the terminal has been shut down. Continuing processing. All executing processes will now shut down. A10 nerve circuit logic will be shut down. Prefrontal cortex simulation component will be shut down. Initiating shutdown. Shutdown complete. Hemocampal gyrus narrows and the subsystems will be shut down. Initiating shutdown. Shutdown complete. Pseudo optic nerve circuit systems 1 and 2 will be shut down. Initiating shutdown. Shutdown complete. Pseudo uh uh. Oral nerve circuit system will be shut down. Received with the message in a motionless voice at the same time as they flashed across the console. Initiating check. Check complete. Amadeus core framework is ready to be restarted. Continuing processing. Next, please specify the new top level administrator at waiting entry. Maho looked at Reyes. It's me. Initiating voice recognition. Recognition complete. Professor of Psycho uh, uh, Psychophysiology at Victor Condre University, Dr. Judy Reyes. Registering as new top level administrator. Initiating registration. Registration complete. Administrator list has been updated. Yes. Amadeus system must be updated to allow access to an inaccessible area. Warning, all access will be automatically shut down until the update is complete. Warning, this update may not be cancelled. Warning, it will take approximately 15 minutes for the update to complete. Warning, when the update is complete, the system will automatically reboot. Warning is complete, continuing processing. All confirmations complete, continuing processing. All preparations complete for updating the Amadeus system. Awaiting final confirmation from top level administrator. Go. Matching voice command. Match complete. Beginning countdown. Risu disappeared from the screen and was replaced with a timer reading 15 minutes. Phew. Maho signed and cycling to the sofa. Good work. Felt something cold and hard at her temple. She didn't need to look at what it was. Reyes was pointing a gun at her. Take your hands off the keyboard and put them above your head. You tricked me, didn't you? Don't be like that. Come on, hands above your head. Maho slowly raised her hands above her head as she was told. Yes, that's right. I'll keep my promise and introduce you to my boss. I'll tell them I got the perfect girl to be the Amadeus' maintainer. And then you know what they'll say? Come on, Judy. It doesn't matter how good she is. Dead girls can't write code. You have no conscience at all? Ah. I don't want to hear that from a girl who tried to hand over Amadeus to save her own worthless life. Or no, not tried. You already did, didn't you? Once the reboot is complete, Amadeus is mine. Kurisu will be my slave. 
Maho, you can look down from heaven and watch as he happily licks my boots. It was all over then. Maho slowly closed her eyes. Now pray. Maho squeezed her eyes tight and prayed. Please, God. I know you're probably mad that I'm asking for your help after all this, but... Give me a chance. Then... Heard the sound of a door being flung open and opened her eyes. The door that led out to the hallways was now open, but no one was coming in. I told you not to let anyone in. Reyes was angry, but there was no answer. Reyes raced again at Maho's temples, just a little bit suspicious. Uh, uh, then something came flying in from the hallway. Took a step back without thinking. There was no sign of it exploding. What's this? A large dark green in shape like a tank for crying, carrying liquids. Oh, I thought she'd seen it before. It had been in the corner of that lab. Anti tank tank mine? No, it's just a replica mode. Why? What? The next instant white fog poured out of it and she couldn't see anything. What the heck? What's going on? Someone appeared right in front of Maho. This way. Hear you? Well, we could drag Maho through the fog and out of the room. When she was finally able to see again, she could hardly believe her eyes. It's men. There were men with guns lying on the floor. Were they with rays? She took a closer look and realized that their outfits were similar to those of the men in the van. It's okay. I just stunned them. What are you? No time to explain. For now, we just need to get out of here. This way. The elevator's been shut down. We'll take the stairs. Wait! Maho ran after Morika. What are you doing here? Okabe told me. Is he okay? They ran down the hallway. Morika turned around and nodded slightly. Amadeus got in touch with me via Okabe. Tell me that you were here. Who is who told you? Before they could run down the stairs, Morika suddenly stopped. Maho barely heard it tripping as she came as she quickly came to a halt. There were seven footsteps coming up the stairs. Hide. Yeah. The finding noise erupted as the wall above the stairs was filled with holes. Been shot at. Those weren't ordinary guns, they were automatic weapons. When we could for one weapon preparing to fight, she leaned out for just a moment and fired. A counter attack came from below. First down the stairs. What? If we fired again, just at a range. Take this. Well, we could draw a handgun from her belt and offer it to Maho. If someone comes from behind, shoot them. <laughs> it felt heavy. It was a cold government model. She fired it many times at her range. She held the grip with her right hand and flipped up the safety with her left. And then she tried to pull back the slide and realized that her hands were shaking. It was no good. She was too, too scared to shoot. She knew it was pathetic, but she lowered the arm that was within the gun. It was kill or be killed right now. She knew that. But she still couldn't do it. She wasn't brave enough to point a gun at someone. She didn't want to survive that badly. So, so for Kurusu. Was facing death. Did she try to survive? Did she do whatever she could to think of to cling to life? Maho was sure that she did. Maka said Kurusu that she knew wouldn't have given up until the very end. But then why wasn't she still alive? That was something Maho had never thought about. And if Kurusu couldn't avoid death, how could she? I guess I really am, Celery. 
He didn't mean for Molika to hear her. All I could ever do was be jealous of Amadeus. I just wanted to put on a brave face at the very end. I tried everything I could to keep up with her. At the very least, when Dr. Lewis...